Welcome to Factorio, my name is Nilo. So this is the weekly recap of our Brave New World series running over on Twitch. This is the sixth week of progress. So uh, here we are at the start of the week, about 70 hours into the game. And uh, what we're seeing here on the map is at the point where we have just completed the red circuit. Used to, I called it orange circuit, but it's turned green, uh, red again, but still has some weird color change at this zoom level. But it's it's kind of red. We can see that it, what it is. So let's let's keep it at that. We have the red circuits. We also have steel is enabled. So that's where we are going to start out, and we are working on going up here to our low density structure. So that's going to be the next big project of something outside. What we're seeing here is two of those resource spawn locations that we are gradually trying to empty. Basically, go from iron into this location, just filling up so we can support more trains. Also, this copper is going. It's actually going into here. That's a problem. Let's fix that. I'm sure we'll fix that in the next episode. Also, expansion-wise, uh, the next thing we want to do, take a look at, is also just see if we have enough of copper, for example. I think we are going to run out of this. Let's uh, jump forward in time into the next episode. And before we do that, let me just remind you that this is a series running over on Twitch. It's on Twitch TV slash Nilos. And uh, it's running Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays every week. And we are progressing. We are inventing new things, come up with new ideas, discussing new train setups. It's very exciting. So if you want to see it more in detail, do drop on by. You can also watch the VODs over on my channel on Twitch. They're not coming here on YouTube, but I'm here on YouTube. I'll do these summaries if you fall behind or if you rather want this sort of follow from the sidelines. Anyway, let's jump another stream forward in time. And here we are. Now we can see that uh, there's a lot more activity on the map. We've expanded out here. We've tapped another copper location. That was a massive expansion, about 200 tiles we just claimed as our country, or as, our, as our part of our land now. We can also see the robots are going crazy. I think that's because of a momentary thing where I basically said that all of the surplus... I had a problem with that. I wasn't consuming any of the petroleum because I was getting plastic and red circuits in everywhere else. So I didn't even need petroleum for this one, which meant that I was running out of, of lubricant and that meant these was getting stuck. So that's uh, that was unfortunate. So what I do now is basically saying that there is a condition here that says, oh, okay, well, I can't do it because I'm up there. Basically, the condition says that if there's a lot of petroleum in this one, just hit it over here, make it into plastic, get the plastic ferried by robots all the way over here, just filling up so we can get an extra train inbound. It's basically just supplementing an extra train here. Uh, yeah, I don't care. We, we'll uh, we'll survive this attack. It has happened. We're, we're in the past, so this attack has happened. This is a pretty interesting build. We're getting 12 lanes of copper coming in. They go into split two lanes for each of these. So there's two full lanes being consumed. Very, very nice build. I really like this. It could be done in a different way that does not require belt weaving, but we chose the belt weaving option. This time we might, uh, we'll choose something else another time. So this is producing, do we not have a, it's up to say this is producing 36 and a bit per second. So not even a full belt. It's going in here and I'm deciding that I want to get these with robots back to Mm -hmm. that one basically making sure that the bus here is not really building stuff it's only being brought in by robots and only supplementing which never is never is going to happen that'll lower the amount of copper being used plastic being used steel being used here on the bus and the bus is just doing fine as it is now yeah so that's that's that one and we have started expanding out here getting one more Copper location, it's already it's up, but it's not fired up yet. Still working on this. This is, uh, as I said, running out of lubricant because of their, when you tap a new location like this, that's quite a lot of belts, undergrounds, and splitters all taking massive amounts of lubricant. So we need to focus a bit on lubricant as we go up here. Also, we are starting to clear out some of the space and we've gotten into, uh, uh, gotten into a fight with the locals, but we'll just push them back and see who's, show them who's boss around here. This area is really should be used for something, but I guess it will be at some point. All right, that's um, that means we now have low density structures being brought back on the bus, supplemented because that was the stuff that was actually lagging. And then that's basically gonna be how I'm 
I'm addressing it. Just figure out what key component is missing out here and then making that outside. Let's jump forward in time for one more stream and then see what we built in that one. Okay, here we are. And this is after another stream. What we can see here simply is that now there's a train operating this path here. Coming back, supplementing with more copper. And yeah, thank you. That. Let me just uh, use this opportunity to talk about the thundering herd. That's going to be, that's a topic we've been discussing very much um, and lately. It is basically the concept that it's it's most visible for copper. Okay, so, oh, by the way, I have a uh, segue to a segue. Um, I have added a new function here that shows signals on map. That one, show rail signal state. It might be a bit cluttered, but I really like it when you can see the trains as they're moving. You can see, for example, here, does this look correct? Does it look like this intersection is working correctly? Yeah, it looks fine. Right. And then you can see sort of when are they blocking. So this one actually blocks, goes up. This one can go in. So they are actually, wow, there's a tiny bit of congestion in the network. That's just the way it is. It's going to happen, but the trains are not moving that fast back and forth. Anyway, back to the thundering herd. The thundering herd is basically all of these are open or they are closed. And then you can see here that one is open, but all the other ones are closed. So that means when we have a situation, that was weird. Oh, the, oh, right, I know why, I know. These are actually incorrect, aren't they? Yeah, I think they are. This one stops when it's more than 55 and this one's at 60. Yeah. I think there might be some issue here and I know that I've fixed it in the latest one. Latest one. Basically what you see here, there will be, this one is open so we should see a train coming in. Yes, we do. There, it's open. Once it hits 60, it'll close. And if none of the other ones are closed, we will probably see a train. Now all of them are closed and there's no one to go. We could see a train coming in and going out again. Basically what happens here is that as soon as one of these stations open, all trains will go in. All of these trains will start heading there if they are available and ready, and they'll start going in, which means it generates extra loads in the network. This is one of those things that I wish we would be. it was different in the way that the uh, train network is done. Basically, what happens is that as soon as one station opens, all trains that can go to that station will immediately go there. And that's the thundering herd that comes crashing into one station. And uh, this is one of the, it can generate a lot of excess transport in the network. You can only fix this through some rather advanced circuit networks. And I don't want to do that. I really just don't want to do it. See, now this one is open. And we got a train inbound. We'll see all the other trains are coming inbound as well. That one and that one, they're also coming in. But they will go out. Boom. And this one will also go out. Because there's nothing, no one else they could go. If one of the other ones had opened in the meantime, they would have been redirected to that one. This just means that there is a lot of idle capacity or idle transport in the belt. The, the funny thing is, though, that the one that will... If they're all activating at the same time, the one that will get into the station first is the one that is the closest to the location, which is actually good because that means that we've automatically built a way that it'll empty the closest patches first. Like this one will never get there first because it's so far away. So it'll be this one that I want to clear first will go in first and this one as well will also come in first because they're closer to this location. Anyway, that was a sidestep on the thundering herd. It's one of the big issues of this train network, but it's one thing that our separated train networks are actually somewhat alleviating. Let's say it like that. Uh, however, we have also built something new. It was actually not very difficult to build. This is a new blue circuit build. And let me just check each column. 63, it means 6.3. It's just that I wanted to make sure that it didn't do it. So 6, but 6.3. So this one is... It's a 12 beacon setup, and if we look at it, it takes 36, it makes 36 blue circuits per second, which is more than enough for, I think it's job for 2000 science, actually, um, if, if we want that. I'm bringing in 12 lanes of green circuits. They're coming in nicely here. There are two trains operating this network, going from green to blue, looking very good, coming in. And also here we have a bit of red. We are getting 
the petroleum is coming in here that's just getting from this location this location has plenty look different color it's back to a normal yellow and not sort of a toxic yellow so we have now blue circuits we're going to do the same with blue circuits as we did with the low density structures they're very low quantity so you can see that there are robots flying back and forth they'll go up here and fill it in on this line basically alternating between using the outside part and using this part at this point we really don't have a lot of things being crafted in the base if we look at where our shortages are mining productivity where are our shortages uh, in terms of science well it's purple science it's always purple science isn't it and blue is okay but i'd like to fix that as well so purple science is probably going to be a big one also because if i really want to scale this up it um, it's going to take a stupid amount of steel production now what we want to do what we are actually working on is the next thing is going to be blue science that we want to do outside and it's going to be the challenge in the next patch or next stream after this one which we'll just uh, jump forward to see at the end of that one which is the last stream of the week to see what we uh, got built in that one let's jump forward here we are this is at the current moment fully updated what i've done over here on the side is just emphasize or just highlight the core components that i am defining here that each of the sciences will need so for example um we are making a red circuit build we're making a how is this not having a blue one here as well it should have a blue one here of course it does Anyway, so we have blue circuits being built outside, so those can be brought in by trains. We're, I'm a bit in doubt whether we should use batteries. May, yes, no, maybe, probably, I have no clue. Uh, but this is, like these things are for solar panels, this one and that one for accumulators, uh, iron and green circuits for the, uh, the radars. And then these three are components. I'm pretty sure I want to make rocket fuel for sure but i don't know if i want to make this or i want to take just green and red inbound i'm already taking green inbound so maybe just take red inbound and at this location make make this i don't know we'll uh, we'll see about it so uh that's just to give us an idea about what things we need inbound for example when we really reduce it then our blue sir blue science takes iron and steel that's what we need for the engines then the red circuits and some sulfur and at this point, also purple science uses a lot, but the most important is the how much steel it actually uses. Now, what we built in this episode is we have built a small patch or small location up here. This is a location that is designed for inbound size and also the spacing size to be able to deliver 2,700 science per minute. But it is currently set up only to half, which is 1,350 science per minute. What I'm doing here is I made sure that this is, I think it was quite creative and this is why it took so long to make. Basically what we're doing is we're doing one belt. We want one of these with one of these. That goes out on one belt. Then we have the new engine icon. So we make engines here. The engines are going out on this belt, which goes out on the western side, which is then shared with the sulfur coming in. So we have sulfur and engines moving upwards. And on the other hand, we have the red, red circuit, which goes upwards here to be moved in. And we sort of leach the other side of the belt for steel, but we don't lead the steel further up up here. So that's how it actually works. It means, means that we can have it one line here. These two lines together make 22.5 blue signs per second, which is going to be 1350 signs per minute. So when, when we have all of this, it's looking good. The only thing we didn't have is the sulfur. And so I took the sulfur and just said, it's a small build. So let's just build it. This one is built towards the 2700. So let's not worry about this. And well, that's just one more, one more science that's built out here. You have quite a lot. Let's say how much blue science. Okay, we have 35,000 blue science. That's rare that we have this kind of, this amount. And that starts the next big question though, this one. I'll probably just leave it as uh, leave it as a robot thing, like we do for blue circuits and we do for low dense structures. So we can actually start grabbing things by robots into a common location. And all the time we're gonna look here, what is what is our shortage? Our shortage here is purple science. Purple science is actually shortage of for a very odd reason. 
it is short on stone bricks. So we're actually going to, the first thing we have to sort next time is stone bricks. It's not going to be like a super big problem because we have stone here and here. So it's probably going to be about down here, but it's also close to a, this one. So this could also be a good location to do uh, rocket fuel, for example. It could also be a good idea to just build a massive rocket fuel factory. It doesn't actually have to be that big because um, if we just look at it, rocket fuel, I'm just getting distracted here. Light oil into that one, rocket fuel. Yeah, so you don't need anything except light oil. You just need everything to convert to light oil. Take whatever petroleum you're making, convert that into solid fuel as well. And then uh, from there on, yeah, you just you just build it, right? It's just um, simple, simple as that. You build, uh, you make it, and then we can send it out. So that actually doesn't even need a train or anything. So let's this little teeny tiny place, we could just stamp in basically this one, the awesome masterclass oil production facility. We can stamp that in here and then we have basic rocket fuel, well, more or less. And then probably a good location out here for stone bricks, which we'll also need both for going back on the bus, but also to go I don't know, wherever we want to make the purple science. Purple science is going to be a huge problem because it's going to need like massive, massive amounts of steel. We did start some design, didn't we? I think we started some design, not really. Uh, we started talking about some design at least. And uh, what we came to the conclusion was that it was, I don't know, what was it? Was it 80 science? Uh, no, it was more. I think it was 130 for nah, I can't even, I think it was 80 uh, let's go with 80 I think it was 80 steel per second inbound that's a lot so that's um that's going to be our next and very big challenge is how do we make and where do we make because we want to make it close to the steel we want to make it close to this one we want to make it close to that one those are the three key ingredients uh, to make purple science so we could make it maybe down here maybe at the top of the water We'll figure out where that's going to be. So that uh, basically concludes one more week. You can see we are expanding. It's getting quite big, this base, and we're starting to sort of go out into uh, to build, really build some scale. The thing is that once we figure out a way to unspaghetti all of the trains here, then, which is kind of silly, but once we have figured it out, then building stuff like this, easy, easy, easy. Building this is a bit of design work. That's really fun. And then uh, it's just stamping it down and then it actually works. The, likewise, the amount of time we spend on iron, steel, copper is really paying off because we can now just stamp down another lane. There's still many more lanes available for each of those. So not a problem. We definitely want more steel, like, like a lot more, but we can start by one more. That could be enough. I've also changed it so that these three if they were working. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So iron is not working. Uh, okay, why is iron not working? Oh, I think I know that. That's because they're all now consuming a lot more. Now it's coming in and they will always start from one side. What is this one set to? 60,000, that's very reasonable. This one's over 60. This one's 55. How many trains do we have inbound? We only have two trains. So definitely this is going to be more trains than that. Maybe three, four trains. It's it's a lot of iron for the steel. So that's going to be something we're going to definitely take a look at. Scaling up steel is absolutely essential. And then start getting some stone breaks and then working our way towards the purple science. Purple science will be a big milestone moving forward. And also rocket fuel as well would be nice. As well as expanding, we got some credits, so let's start expanding. I think it's going to be down here and also landfill the hell out of it. How much landfill? 230,000, so that's good. That's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to follow this live, it's live on Twitch TV slash Ninos every Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays at 8 p.m. Central European time. So do come on over. Even if you can't stay, then it's always nice. I really appreciate it when people say, hey, I watched it on YouTube. Uh, you told me to come over, so here I am. Hey, that, that kind of thing. It's, it's really nice just to... Uh, to get those two communities to, uh, to to sort of be more alike because I spend a lot of time on, on Twitch and a lot of time on YouTube and I want to make sure that it's, it's kind of the same. So anyway, thanks very much. I'll see you guys around. And as always, stay effective.